as soon as we got out, I was like, oh my. It, first of all, you're, you're in the international part of the airport and there's nobody. <laughs> it's just <laughs> desolate. And it's not very clean, of course. There's, there's hardly anything. And there's this big Nigerian woman just like, um, get over here, get over there, move over here, follow me, give me that, give me that. Did you bring this? Did you bring that? I was like, <laughs> after about 15 minutes of that, I told Carol, this is gonna be a lot of fun. This is gonna be a lot of fun. And then we met up with some folks so, from uh, the UK, and then we teamed up with uh, La Pisa Lazuli, who was um, actually, um, they were hosting this conference. Actually, the assignment for Randy Clark's uh, ministry trips, it's called International Ministry Trips. So he, he or the leaders, the speakers will do the teaching in the conference and then we become the ministers who serve. We become his ministry team and we pray for healing and we pray for whatever it is that they're imparting to the people. Then we become the ministry team and so we do ministering to the people. So we were able to minister to some of the pastors, some of the leaders, ministry leaders in Nigeria, and just to pray over them and to, um, you know, pour God's love over them. Lepis Lazuli, that organization, is only a four-year-old organization. And so their heart was to bring all the leadership, the church leadership in Nigeria together for unity. And then the theme was, the theme of the conference was revival. So bringing the, the leadership in Nigeria together to have a revival, but to start with unifying and bringing unity among the leaders. Well, we got to the hotel and even that was um, just amazing. I mean, we had security in front of us. We had security between us. We had security in the back of the back bus. Mm -hmm. There was just a lot of security. And then you get to the hotel and it's a fortress. It was a Sheraton hotel, but you open the, the, the security to open up this big heavy gate that lets you in. And then you get in and then they take you through like the TSA where they screen you for your bags and they do the metal check over your body just to get into the lobby. The next day was the day that we ministered to all of the, the leaders in Nigeria and boy, <laughs> that was something. I was amazed. I could, I mean, I, and then they took us into this church. It was a square church. And so the stage is in the center of this church. And so we're sitting in the center on the, on the ground floor. And you look around and you see people that are this kind of colors, like even brighter than this, you know. The women are dressed, the men are dressed, and we find out that these are deacons, pastors, uh, apostles, even some government leaders are, are in attendance. And I'm gonna say maybe a thousand people were there and their worship was just amazing. So we sat there through the worship and, and uh, uh, each of the ministers gave a message. And the last one uh, to give the message was Leif and he said, uh, so I'm gonna call my ministers up now. And so we stood up and he said, I wanna call them down to the front of the stage. So I looked at Carol who was sitting on my left and I said, so what are we supposed to do? And she said, Oh, just, um, just listen, ask the Holy Spirit. And I just looked at her and said, what? Are, are you <laughs> kidding me? And she goes, yes, just ask the Holy Spirit. I was like, oh, this is not happening. So we're going to do this now. Okay, all right. So I did. We went down. And then I heard Leif say, um, the ministers are going to impart the love of God. I said, oh, I can do that. And what I was, the shock was, is that there were, hundreds of people coming towards us and there was just 15 of us across and just hundreds and i'm gonna say at least 20 30 deep and they stand right behind each other so you have to pray for one and then go to the next and to the next and you've got to kind of squeeze in between them to pray for them but it was like and each time you pray for one it kind of takes something out of you, you know. And I had to tell Carol, I said, is it okay that we cry 
when we're ministering and she said oh yeah yes. because you can't help it you know they're mm-hmm. they're they're crying and they're in, and and they're all praying in their spiritual language as well as you're praying for them and as you're doing the impartation and they're crying and they're falling mm-hmm. you know and some of them I didn't even minister to I just you know I just touched them and they were they're down they was just slain and falling I mean just bodies just falling here and there and I started crying and saying I'm sorry my day that was day I was shot after that I didn't I didn't even go to dinner I told Carol you go to dinner I'm gonna stay in and sleep and that's what I did that's that's the primary purpose that Randy Clark started his international ministry trips to let people know people like us know that God can use little old me in a supernatural powerful way that we would not have imagined but that's his whole purpose he has international ministry trips that go all over the world. And just to encourage people, to let people know that God can and wants to use little old me. Oh, well, the conference was totally different from this, uh, from this church that we went to the first day. The conference was, um, it was at a uh, convention hall. Both conferences were at a convention hall and we walked in and my mouth, my jaw dropped because I was like, how much people is going to be here? And she said, 5,000 people registered. And then I think I got a little frightful. I think my anxiety <laughs> level went up a little bit because I knew that there was only about 15 of us mm-hmm. and five from UK, so about 20 of us mm-hmm. would be ministering to like 5,000 people. And I was like, okay, I was a little bit freaking out there. So they, they took us and sat us. And I was like, I, I freaked out. I have to admit, I really freaked out. And I told Carol, oh my gosh, this place is going to fill up. And she said, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, don't worry. And she just is so calm. So having her there really helped me. And so for me, it's just, um, it's just an unimaginable joy to be able to take someone like Pam you know, as a spiritual mentor and to see God take her to the next level. That's the powerful thing and that's the, that's the joy. That's a joy, not that I take the credit, but that I just allow God to do what He wants to do as He takes her to the next level. But just the fact that I get to witness it is just like the icing on the cake. They're, they're, just, they're just pouring love into us already. Yes. And so, I mean, we just, her and I just felt led to just go into the mm-hmm. aisles and the seats mm-hmm. and just start hugging people and mm-hmm. praying for them already, you know, and mm-hmm. just, you know, just, it's just an overwhelming sense that you have to just love on them and they're loving on you and yes. you're just feeling like I'm overflowing already, you yes. know, at this point. And then we get in and we, we do what, what we do and the ministers and that evening there was this woman that came to me and so we prayed you know and I said what's going you know what's going on and she says well I have pain in my chest I have pain in my back and I have pain in my breasts and then she lifted up she was wearing something like this on Mm -hmm. and she lifted up her sleeve and her arm was swollen to double size and it was black and blue on the top and all red on the bottom Mm -hmm. and I said how did you get that and she said she fell and to to keep herself, to save herself, she used her hand, and that's how it got like that. And then she lifted up her skirt, and you could see her ankles were like swollen, swollen. And I said, did you walk here? And she said she mm-hmm. walked from the bus stop, and that's how she got the, the swelling. So I said, you need to just sit and relax, but you need to see a doctor about this. And she said, I was going to see the doctor, but I wanted to come here first. Yes. So I said, okay, then let's pray. Mm-hmm. And so we started to pray. Um, uh, 
Uh, and so I prayed for her once, and then I said, how are you feeling? And she said, oh, it still hurts. So I began to pray for her a second time. And in the time that we were praying, she said, my husband died. And I said, oh, your husband died? And she said, yeah. And I said, are you angry because he died? And she said, yes. I said, what other emotions are you feeling? And she said, oh, she's scared because it's just her and her children. And I said, okay, so I just sensed that we needed to pray for forgiveness. Um, for her husband for dying and then for herself you know for um, being so angry and so we went to the forgiveness prayer you know uh, one of the tools that we got at the prayer tools class so we did the exchange window and then she turned over her her fears and her forgiveness and we did all of that you know and then I began to pray for her again and she said the pain in her chest and her back and her breast went away and so I said okay so Let's look at her arms. I looked at her arm. It was still swollen, black and blue, red. I said, well, let's pray again. So we prayed again and nothing happened. And so I said, don't give up, you know, continue to pray. The next morning when we arrived, um, Carol and I got out of the bus and we was headed up the stairs and she came rushing with her friend and she, she they call me mommy. I'm not real sure if that's like a respectful name for somebody older than you. But she said, mommy, mommy, you know. Um, she wanted to introduce me to her friend, so she did and everything. And so we hugged and then she lift up her arm, her sleeve of her arm and the black and blue was gone, the swelling was gone, the redness was gone. And I was like, I cried. I don't know if she cried, but I cried. And I said, Carol, this is the lady, this is the lady. And so we, she, we introduced ourselves and everything and Mary was, her name was Mary. And so we hugged and we took a few pictures and I found out later that night that there is a village in Nigeria yes. where the rebels came in yes. and they killed the men of the village. I found out that when they started praying for these widows, she was one of them. So that's how her husband passed away, you know? And so, oh, I just, I mean, I just wanted to look for her and I just kept going in the crowd and trying to find her just so that I could hug her and pray for her because now I know how her husband was taken from her, you know? And she wasn't praying for her husband forgiveness. She was praying for the individual that killed her husband, you know? Yes. That's I didn't understand the language enough to understand that that's what she was doing. It was amazing, just amazing. What I saw is this boldness to step out and to say, okay, Holy Spirit, it's you and me. Yeah. It's you and me, Holy Spirit. So show me, help me, be with me, guide me, lead me. And I think for, for me, I, I love to see that uh, the people that I mentor know that it's the person of the Holy Spirit who is their constant guide and teacher. And so to see that happen with Pam and to see just the excitement and, and the tears to know that God wants to use her. And I, I believe that's what happens to everybody who goes on a, on a ministry trip, mission trip, to see that God will use you in your own unique way in your own unique way. The way God created you, He will use you. If there was something that I could share for anybody who even, who's even, I, I've been able to share my testimony with a few people in, in our church. And I say, you know, um, when, when the Holy Spirit nudges you to go, you remember that two thirds of God's name is go. And you just go, you just go. And, um, you know, Pastor Mike had said at the at the missions conference. She said, he said, these uh, these short-term missions are more for the minister than the people that you're ministering to. And I can say without a doubt that is true. That I went there to minister mm -hmm. to a nation, mm -hmm. and I was ministered to. You know, and um, now it's almost like you go you go to the mission field so that the God, God and Holy Spirit and, mm -hmm. and Jesus can equip you to come home mm -hmm. and then minister to the people in your own home. You know, because it's not a long term. It's just, not. so now I can, I can use what I've learned out in the mission field and what I've seen in the mission yes. field to minister right here in my own community, yes. my own Jerusalem, Mililani, yes. Yes. you know, my own, yes. you know, to my family, to my neighbors, you know people in my community 
and in my church. You know, so I, you know, I pray that anybody who feels that nudge to, to go on a, a mission, to just go and don't worry about the finances, and don't worry about the food, and don't worry about the accommodations, because God will take care of all of it. He knows where your comfort levels are, and He knows how far you can stretch, you know, and He'll take you right up to that point, just so you know that it's Him. Just so you know that it's Him. You know, it's not, not nothing of your own doing that is Him, you know. The greatest mentor in the world couldn't have done for me what God did for yes, me on that, exactly. on that mission field. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Absolutely.